What's up, y'all? Uh, Vanish Report this week will be taking place um, uh, somewhere in the Iraqi territory, so I uh, look forward to that. And this is a vape. Y'all like this? Y'all like this? We'll watch this. <laughs> Last week reminded us why we love fantasy football. I'm talking close matchups, Monday miracles, primetime performances, unlikely heroes, last second upsets, half point victories. I mean, it had it all. This week does not. Uh, kicking us off is Alex, who scored a team total of 66 points, which is the ninth worst fantasy performance um, in the fantasy report era. The worst performance course being uh, Ben's 52.62 uh, in week 6 of 2022, but that's in the fantasy report era. Well, the worst league performance of all time was of course uh, Zach Hollis's 45 and a half that he scored on uh, week uh, 9 of 2018, but that predates fantasy report, so that was excluded, but it's I figured I would mention it. Danny scored 134 and beat Alex by 68, uh, giving our former champion back-to-back -back losses. Back-to-back, -back, baby! Ruben managed to put up the 13th worst performance in the Fantasy Report era um, in his franchise's second worst game after dropping 67.88. Um, Timmy didn't score 100 and he did not need to. Ruben lost by 28. Zach didn't give us anything to talk about, really. Um, he scored under 100 and lost his matchup against Couch before Monday even started, uh, ultimately that tallying up to a 44-point loss. And we, uh, we had a classic matchup. Uh, me versus Fennel. Let's just say, uh, yeah. I'm now five and six against them. Anger is not a solution. Rather a reactionary based emotion influenced by the preconceived notions you have about the world around you. Anger bad. Just try some clay looks. <laughs> Let's move on to the games that were actually good this week. Carl's son versus Carl's other son was a heartbreaking affair. Trevor had no players left going into Monday and less than 100 points for the second week in a row. Normally it'd be time to hit the panic button, uh, but once again, the person going against Trevor decided that they actually fucking suck at fantasy football. Uh, Luke needed 16 points out of Kyle Pitts and Jake Elliott. And, you know, thank God Luke drafted Kyle Pitts. So the rest of the league didn't have to. Uh, Trevor advances to 2-0 after two horrible weeks in fantasy. Christopher versus JC uh, kept up with a common theme that we've seen this week, which was heartbreaks and almost comebacks. Christopher was down 26.2 going on the Monday, with a very capable Jalen Hurts left to play. The Eagles-Falcons game was a thriller, just like the game that we are talking about here. Uh, Jalen Hurts at 25.8 in the final seconds. Had a shot at a big play, which would have won Christopher the game. At this point, he's only down by one point. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that did not happen. The throw was intercepted, and JC won by less than three. I know I talked down on this week, uh, but it really wasn't actually all that bad. I mean, the last two games could have easily gone for game of the week. Uh, but ultimately, I chose this game because both Ben and Cody had players left to play going into Monday. So rather than playing catch up, it was instead an even battle. Uh, ben was up by six with Bijan left to play, and Cody had Devontae Smith. Uh, both players did end up having great games, but it all came down to the last 30 seconds. Smith had 20.6, 20 
while Robinson had 16.2. Eagles had the possession, and Cody was down by just 1.2 points. Bijan fought hard, but with the Eagles looking to move the ball through the air, Ben's undefeated season rests at the feet of the Falcons' secondary. And wouldn't you have it? Hurts with a 20-yard target to who other than a wide-open Devontae Smith. But wide open is an under, uh, overstatement there. That pass was intercepted, ending the game, not just for the Eagles, not just for Christopher, but for Cody as well. Communist Spinell is back on track to regain his title as Commissioner IR after Hollywood Brown is slated to miss the rest of the season. And Joe Mixon went down this last week with a minor injury. Um, we're praying for Aaron Rodgers. We have no trade updates this year. Still waiting on the first person in the league to pull the trigger. Um, at the moment, Vegas has Fennell as their favorite. Not far behind him is Ruben, uh, then JC, um, both neck and neck for second place. And a little farther down the list, you get to Cody, and then after him is just the rest of the league. Hey, make sure you guys get out there and bet. Because your bet does matter. So get out to the booths this November and gamble some money. Damn it, Daryl, shut up. Just shut up, Daryl. My name is... And I approve this message. Welcome back to this season's edition of the Win More Report. Brought to you by RealIrish.com, your easiest source of finding authentic Irish brands and apparel. Log on today and use code TORTURE for free shipping of orders over $100. The remaining undefeated teams are Communist Manel, who is currently first in points for and seventh in points against. Trevor is also on this list. Trevor is ranked 13th. Uh, in points for. He also happens to be ranked 14th in points against. Uh, so expect Trevor to be off this list very soon. We have Ben on this list. Ben's having a decent season. He's 6 in points for and 8th in points against and he is undefeated. In the last slot we have Couch. Um, Couch is having a really good season. He is second in points for right now, and he is 10th in points against. It's a shocker to see the two people who competed for the Women's Cup Championship last year uh, be on this list. Granted, Trevor shouldn't be, and I will die on that hill, but um, I'll be excited to see how they manage to finish the season. Now we reach the much more entertaining side of this, the win list report, showcasing Fantasy Report's favorite teams. If you were shocked by um, Ben and Trevor being on the win more report, then you are going to be just as shocked to hear some of the names that we have here on the win list report. Kicking us off, we have Cody. His first season since joining this league that he did not start off um, undefeated for multiple weeks uh, and instead decided he's going to tank. Um, he's currently fifth in points for and fifth in points against, so more of an unfortunate situation than anything. Next up, we got Ruben. Ruben is having a horrible season. Uh, Ruben is 14th in points for. Next up, we have Alex, our former champion, who is 12th in points for. <laughs> Finally, um, we have Zach Hollis. Uh, Zach is 10th in points for, second in points against. Good to see him on here. I mean, with a cast like that, uh, the infamous 0 14 season may rest solely on the back of Zach Hollis. Earlier today, we saw dogs playing poker make several separate transactions uh, that our analysts are just not sure what to make of. Um, they allegedly signed the Bengals' defense to a seven-day contract and then immediately cut them in favor of the Giants' defense. 
and then immediately cut the Giants' defense in favor of the Panthers. I, look, I have no real issue with cutting the Giants, aside from the fact that they are still responsible for paying out both contracts. Um, but what the fuck are we doing? I mean, your best options were between the Panthers and the fucking Giants? I mean, what, what the fuck are we doing here? I, you take, take whoever. Whoever is playing whoever. I mean, that is the last two teams I'm picking. Couch also agrees with this statement because moments after signing the Panthers, Couch then cut the Panthers for the Raiders. Couch is responsible for paying off four defensive contracts this week. And really, if he kept the Panthers, he probably would have been Clown of the Week. Speaking of Clown of the Week, Clown of the Week this week goes out to uh, the Florida State Seminoles who would genuinely have an easier time winning games if their quarterback was my fucking drunken uh, grandfather. They lost to Boston College this past weekend. I mean, what the fuck am I even watching? Honorable mention is Zach Hollis for winning a $100 buy-in and then starting the season 0-2. We got Derek versus Ruben. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself the odds on this 60-40. Ruben is having a really rough time this year. Next up, we have Alex versus Luke. Um, I know Alex is 0-2, uh, but Luke just lost Pacheco, and I got Alex with the 58-42 odds. We have Fennell versus Cody. Um, yeah, Fennell has been barreling through this year. And I would be dumb not to pick him. Therefore, I'm giving Cody the 52-48 odds. Next up, we have Couch versus Ben. Uh, Couch coming out with a bit of a revenge game. Uh, f for, um... I don't know. Couch just has a thing with Ben. I think he just doesn't like the guy. Couch has got 55-45 odds, though. We got Trevor versus Timmy. Uh, I've talked a lot of shit about Trevor uh, this episode. With that being said, I actually, uh, for whatever reason, think Trevor's going to win this game and finally snap out of his um, two-week-long, less than 100-point streak that he's got going on here. I got Trevor with 56-44 odds. We got JC versus Danny. A uh, clash of two very good teams is what I would say. Um, but I still got JC with the 65-35 odds here. Finally, we have Christopher versus Zach. Uh, expect Zach to remain on the winless list. Uh, I got Christopher with 53-47 odds. That was a great week, too. Uh, I loved every part of it. Well, except half the games. The fact that I lost. Uh, the impending 60-point defeat Danny's team is going to put on me after talking down on his team uh, the same week that he beat Alex again. I mean, this league really just repeats itself uh, year after year. Speaking of repeating itself, Godspeed from the Cock and Ball Torch organization, and best of luck to all league members. Except for Ruben. I hope you score 60 again. Mr. Winning, yes, your honor. It's a pleasure. I love your um, cock ass uh, video tube thing. Thank you, your honor. Let's see, what are you in here for today? Uh, ah, there we are. Violating a restraining order with Zachary Communist Fennell. Yes, but you see, Your Honor, uh, it was an accident. Uh, I didn't mean to run into him, actually. Uh, it's just a wrong place, wrong time type beat. Uh, says here you were at his front door. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I was. Uh, like I said before, uh, it was like a wrong place, wrong time type beat. 